Howdy doody, I'm back with another post view, this time on the Wolfenstein, the new order. This video is designed to help you decide if you want to play the game or not. It's not a review because that means I would make the decision for you. But instead, this is a post view, in case you didn't know what that is, it lets you decide for yourself if you want to play the game or not. As always, no spoilers. Enjoy. Wolfenstein The New Order is an action-adventure shooter game played from a first-person perspective. To progress through the story, players battle enemies throughout levels. The game was developed by Machine Games and published by Bethesda Softworks. The game was released on 20th May of 2014, so it's the first new-gen Wolfenstein game and we, the real fans of Wolfenstein, can really appreciate this. The protagonist is the same brutal, soulless war machine as in the previous games from this series. Captain William B.J. Blazkowicz, destructive son of a bitch that one. That's the exact reason why he is the perfect protagonist for a game like this, killing Nazis. But in this installment we can see that Blazkowicz has a soft side as well. And indeed he has a heart and feelings. We can see him getting tired of this war and just wanting peace and a family. He even has dreams where the war is over and he has a family. He is making some real connections with some side characters, which is also good to see and it gives the game another perspective, not just the violent shooting and destruction as always. I think it's great that they brought back uh, Blazkowicz, and even some side characters brought back from the previous games like Caroline Becker, and the new characters have their charm as well. They are very interesting and entertaining. War has grown a little wearisome. Nothing much of interest ever happens around these parts. Today I landed a helicopter on a nicked Nazi nuclear submarine aircraft carrier, after which I donned a deep water diving suit, swam down an abyssal trench in the middle of the Atlantic fucking ocean. Don't mean to bore you with the details. Long story short, I'm now standing inside a secret vault full of things so magical and abnormal in nature the mind has no recourse but to shudder in bewilderment. Of course, I'm accompanied by a Nazi-killing lunatic and some kind of genius wizard who claims to be on a first-name basis with God Almighty himself. Oh, well, we can only hope for a more stimulating turn of events in the future. Uh, give my love to everyone back home, Fergus out. And some of them really have an, a weird and in some way interesting perspective of the world. Tekla's perspective and idea is really unique and original. I mean, I've watched in my lifetime like 1000 movies and played like 40 games, read several books and met hundreds of people, and I have never heard this consciousness perception before. The brain is a biological computational device running an electrochemical process. Your consciousness is an emergent property of that process. Blank face like that of a baby. In other words, you are your electrochemical process. Fundamentally, you have the experience of a continuous existence. You are you at this point in time, the same you as you were in the past, and you have a sensation of riding along this continuum of being you into the future. Do you follow me? Doesn't look like it. Continuing. On occasion, the brain may be subjected to trauma, temporarily discontinuing the electrochemical process such as a boxer being knocked out. As this occurs, the brain is no longer running its electrochemical consciousness generating process. Hence, consciousness is lost. You lose consciousness. Pay attention now. At this point in time, your consciousness, all that is you, your continuum of being you, has ceased to exist in the physical world. Now, moments later, the electrochemical process may start up again, allowing consciousness to emerge out of the information stored in the brain. But I wonder, where are you in the meantime? Now it's too stupid. Must we not assume that at the point when consciousness is lost, the person dies? If a new consciousness appears or not in the same brain is entirely inconsequential to the dead consciousness. The new consciousness is simply a new person. Because it emerges from the same brain, it has access to all the memories and cognitive structures as a dead consciousness, so it thinks it is the same person, but in actuality, it is just an imposter, inheriting the body and brain from the previous, now dead inhabitants. Yes, like talking to a child. Uh. What about the soul? Oh, soul. I knew he was stupid. There's no such thing as a soul. We are machines of biology, nothing more, nothing less. Idiot! The soul, simply a pointless concept dreamt up by priests and fairy tale men. You're an anomaly, you. An outlier, useless. A laughing anus is what you are. <gasps> So the writing and the development of the characters is truly amazing and they put some real 
effort into it. Even the character animations and gesticulations look super good. This means that the acting was good and also the motion capture. So good job Bethesda. But they also have characters who are boring and have no real impact on the story. But I guess that was intended so no harm done. So they put some great time into the character development. This applies for both old and new characters for the game series, which definitely is a good feature to the game. The game's story only takes about 9 to 11 hours depending on the difficulty that you play the game on. And of course, this also depends on the fact that you fully explore all of the maps or just rush the story. But there is definitely more content as there are two different timelines the Fergus timeline and the Private Ryan timeline. But the overall gameplay is not different at all, and neither is the story. Just some minor character conversations are different. I played the Fergus timeline, which means that I saved his ass, because he was more of a soldier as Private Weenie, who was basically a crybaby, and that's not what you need in a Nazi-ruled world. You need a good soldier with great ideas to defeat the Nazis. The game uses ID Tech 5 game engine, which is pretty smooth and is just perfect for Bethesda games. Story driven games, I mean. The game utilizes a health system in which players' health is divided into separate sections and that regenerate. If an entire section is lost, players must use health packs to replenish the missing health. Players may take cover behind objects during firefights using it as tactical advantage and to avoid taking damage from enemies. Players use melee attacks, firearms and explosives to fight enemies and may run, jump and occasionally swim to navigate through the locations. Melee attacks can be used to silently take down enemies without being detected. Alternatively, players can ambush enemies which often result in an intense firefight between two parties. In combat, a cover system can be used as assistance against enemies, players have the ability to lean around, over and under cover, which can be used as a tactical advantage during shootouts and stealth levels. I like that they added fully stealth levels, where you basically just have a knife and you have to infiltrate buildings and occasionally kill a few Nazis. This is appreciated. Although the stealth system is not entirely polished, the guards have occasional blind spots where they just ignore you, but it's not easy, I mean... You still get spotted pretty, pretty easily and if you do and don't kill the commander in time, he will call for backup and the fight will get messy real fast, so take care and kill those commanders in silence. So yes, this means that the game lets you play the story as you want, either go stealthy and kill enemies effectively, sometimes even brutally. I also love that the mechanics lets you go off script sometimes, I mean obviously the game was scripted for that as well. But you can do things that are not in the main story and neither are in the secondary missions. So this means that if you see something awesome and want to try it, then most probably, just most probably, the game will let you to. Like I did here. I was like, whoa, that's a big robot. Let's kill it. And I wasn't sure I could or the game that would let me. But I did and there are many more off scripts like these. So find them and enjoy them. Be creative. The animations are beautifully rendered and acted. Voice actors and animations mix very well, almost too well. Plus, the character writing was amazingly as well. It really gives you that buzz that you feel and the tension like you would really be in the Nazi ruled world. Also, the writing, animation and voice acting and all these little articles you can find just intensifies the game and makes it more realistic and believable. Plus, you will barely, barely find animation glitches. So, Quality Assurance did a real good job on this project, and the developers are due to their credit as well. Good job, Bethesda. Great animations. Also, the main menu has some awesome prep talks, and some crazy good rock music to go along with it. Great job on the menus, developer guys. i let you see for yourself.
As I have mentioned, there are a lot of enemy types, from normal human soldiers with assault rifles and shotguns to super soldates with heavy armor and machine guns. There are flying rocket shooting drones, Kampfhunds, Kampfhunds, I think I pronounced that correctly, I'm not sure, which are dogs with armor and some mutagen that makes them super angry or some shit like that. There are Panzerhunds and big mech robots which are very hard to take down and you cannot defeat them with the same tactics, so take care. This also makes the game a little bit harder and you can't just go all frontal and guns blazing on a huge mech or a giant Panzerhund. You need some tactics and a lot of running. I mean a lot. Anyway, these robots only exist in the 1960s Nazis controlled world, so you will be encountering them only in about 19% of the game. <laughs> so good luck. But there are also a lot of futuristic weapons to fight them and they can be dually wielded. So have fun shooting some metal up. Also the boss fight levels are very, very well designed. There are also multi-level boss fights like Death's Head at the end of the game, which is a nice addition. Also there are a few references from the older Wolfenstein games, like uh, Death's Head's mechanical suit is very similar to Mecha Hitler from Wolfenstein 3D and also uses four chain guns. Also the best eastern egg I've seen in games so far is the first level of Wolfenstein 3D is playable as an eastern egg during the early portions of the game, dubbed a nightmare. It can be accessed by sleeping on a mattress hidden in the attic of the Chryso base. Completing the nightmare level will cause the splash screen of the old game to appear on the wall next to the bed. We older gamers can appreciate this so much because we played the first Wolfenstein 3D, so it, it was like I had my childhood back for a few minutes there. So thanks that you thought of us old gamers as well, Bethesda. Wolfenstein The New Order is both a continuation as it takes place L after all the previous installments and the reboot of the series, as it features new situations, settings and story with an alternate timeline. Unlike previous installments, the New Order is surprisingly devoid of supernatural or occult elements staple to the series and features a heavy presence of technology and science instead. Unlike other previous Wolfenstein games produced by ID Software Wolfenstein The New Order is not entirely a first-person shooter game, but contains more elements of action-adventure. As seen in multiple levels, Blazkowicz must rely on stealth infiltration and is armed with minimum weaponry, also numbers of enemies are severely shrunk, comparing with Wolfenstein 2009. German characters, especially the Nazis, now speak German rather than English with a German accent. Ich habe die Kreisau gefangenen 16 Stunden lang am Stück verhört. Diese Nächte lang verhöret bringen mich noch ins frühe Grab. Ich gehe jetzt nach Hause und schicke die Gefangenen zurück nach Eisenwald. Der Bus ist vorhin eingetroffen. Müller! Müller, antworten Sie! Verdammt, Müller, Sie erwarten, dass ich Sie bei jeder Kleinigkeit um Erlaubnis frage und Sie besitzen nicht mal den Anstand, auf eine einfache Transportanfrage zu antworten. Lecken Sie mich doch am Arsch, Sie Drecksack! Sie sind eine Schande für die ganze Operation! Ich nehme keine Befehle mehr von Ihnen entgegen, verstanden? Blaskowitz now speaks and occasionally provides inner monologues during gameplay and cutscenes. Off an elevator. What could go wrong? Better stand on the counterweight. In stark contrast to the previous games where he was mostly silent, which tells us that BJ is not just a Nazi killing war machine, but he also has feelings, a soul, and a heart and we get to know the Nazi ruled world a little from his perspective, which is a good thing in my opinion. The environment. So I have to say it guys, the environment is super detailed and everything adds up to the main story. And to be honest, this alternate reality wasn't as far as we thought it might have been. 
I mean, just look at the fact that the Nazis really had the best technology during the Second World War. They also had plans for the Gibraltar Bridge and some uber material that they might use to rebuild the Reich after the war has ended. But luckily that didn't happen. So this brings us to the fact that all the newspaper articles you can find in the game just adds up and intensifies the story. And even the collectibles, the concept art, the character data, the music records with the German Beatles singing, singing the Yellow Submarine, or in this case actually the, the Blue Submarine, Blaue U-Boat. Or whatever the fuck is the pronunciation. I'm sorry, I don't know German. Sorry, excuse my German and English as well, whatever. The Enigma codes, which actually were used in World War II and later cracked by Alan Turing. Warning, advertisement coming up. If you don't know this, please consider watching the movie Imitation Game. Even some gold collectibles has a meaning in the story. Of course all of these collectibles are just optional and a complete waste of time because you don't really get anything from them except for the fact that it completes the missing small irrelevant pieces of the story. And intens intensifies the story as well, but I don't know, it's worth it. And of course the health upgrades which you also have to find because they are hidden or you just have to take a nap, these increase your maximum health. There are these are the only collectibles that reward you. Anyway, I recommend collecting every single collectible just as I did because they give a lot of perspective on this alternate reality where the Nazis are controlling the world. And most of them are not even hard to find. A lot of them are very conveniently placed, but some of them are really fucking hard to find, excuse my language, maybe impossible if you don't know where to look. Also look up the Man in the High Castle TV series and then you will know what the world might be like if all this would have happened. Plus the TV series also has a few cross references with the game. So honestly I don't know which inspired which, the game inspired the TV series or the other way around, I don't know, but who am I to say? Anyway the new skill unlocking feature is also something very unique and original that I haven't seen in other games. You actually have to do and complete a few achievements in order to unlock skills that comes next in certain type of skill sets like stealth, assault, demolition and tactical. You have to go stealthy if you wish to unlock the new skills in the stealth skill type and get the bonus health for the next takedown or hold more throwing knives etc etc. This is great because you don't actually have to spend skill points and try to earn them, you just play the and the way that you play the game, it will reward you with the exact skills that you need. For example, if you play stealthy like I do, you complete the stealth skills a lot faster than the tactical ones. But all of them are pretty useful, so definitely consider completing all of the requirements for all the skills, especially if you do more playthroughs. The end game. The ending game wasn't all rainbows and unicorns and pinky clouds. But that's not what I expected from a Wolfenstein game. I was expecting a hard and dramatic ending with some smell of victory and glory in the air. And I totally got that. So for me, this was a great ending. Don't expect anything else from a game like this. Because this reflected the, world's, the world ruled by Nazis and that wouldn't have been nice. So you solved realistic problems in the game and as an aftermath expect realistic ending, but in my opinion this ending totally fits and it's, it's great. Some critics say that the game is boring, repetitive and it's too futuristic for a Wolfenstein genre, but in my opinion the Wolfenstein game series needed this gem in their list because it's a nice addition to finally play a futuristic Wolfenstein game. Because if it wouldn't have been a futuristic one, then it would have been the same game as before. At least like this we can 
have the feeling that we played something new in a Wolfenstein game, and not always World War II time period games. Plus, it's a lot more fun fighting robots than zombies, and it's a fresh environment for the series. Why not? I think we needed this change. Oh yeah, and the level design is not repetitive at all, because you never had to use the same tactics and same weapons to fight through the chapters. So this game wasn't at all repetitive. I don't know what the other guys played when they said that it's repetitive, but definitely not this game. On the other hand, I agree with other opinions that say the loading system is totally wrong, because most of the time you don't even see what you're picking up from the floor, but the loot prompt is already displayed on the screen. This inclines the player to absolutely go f crazy on the looting button and just spam the hell out of it. I mean, after an intense battle with 100 German fully trained soldiers and armed to the teeth, plus a freaking robot dog, and all I do after the shootout is over is running up and down the place and pressing the loot button. It just doesn't fit. That wasn't supposed to happen, Bethesda. You had a promising game. You were the chosen one. In conclusion, this game is a very good game. I highly recommended it if you are a true fan of this series or just like a first person shooter in the futuristic Nazi world. That's it for this post view. Thanks for watching. Also, don't forget to subscribe. If this video helped you decide or figure out if you want to play in the game or not, then please share this video so it might help others as well and leave a like. If you don't, I'll send Blasco after you and he will chop you into pieces with his chainsaw. Until the next boss view. Hoodie doody!